Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. I just wanted to take a few minutes and introduce to you a really cool thing that you're going to fall in love with called the unit circle. And so, um, here we go. Just kind of follow along and, and see if you can pick up on what I'm trying to uh, throw down. Um, what we're going to look at is a coordinate axis. Again, your traditional X and Y. And the simplest definition of a unit circle is it's just a circle that has a radius of 1. And it's centered at the origin. And so if this has a radius of, of one unit, that means I can label some of these points. This would be like the point one zero. This would be another point. You guessed it, zero one. And over here, we'd have negative one zero. And down here we have zero negative one. So that is the unit circle, um, the word unit coming from a single unit. And um, the reason it's radius 1 is just because 1 is the smallest integer. It's easy to work with. But the unit circle is going to help us organize um, some cool values, uh, particularly sine and cosine values. And so here's how it works, guys. If we take a special triangle, so remember there's two special triangles. We've got the 45, the 45-90 triangle. And these have some special ratios. Um, I need to put some notes on, on our classroom site that you can look at those ratios, you can Google them, whatever, but you'll get reminded of them here in a second. So let's just say for fun, because we can, that we take one of these triangles and we put it inside the unit circle. So I'm going to put that 30, 60, 90 right in here. And so if I label some of this data here, I'm just kind of follow along here. This would be 60 degrees. And we'd have a point on the circle here. And remember that the key thing, and this is where the unit piece comes in. Remember, this is a circle with radius 1. And so this hypotenuse would automatically be 1 because that's the radius of the circle. But one of the ratios that a special triangle has is that the shorter side is always one half of the hypotenuse. But if the hypotenuse is one, then half of one would be one half. And so I could say that this side is one half. And then if you remember the, the special triangle, or even if you don't remember it, the idea is, is that this longer side is radical 3 times the shorter side. And so this longer side, if you multiply across, would be radical 3 over 2. So that would be this side. Now, it seems kind of weird um, so far, maybe, maybe not. If you can follow along with most of that, you're in great shape. But now if you think about this as a point on the circle, and there's a lot of points on the circle. You know, we could go anywhere around this circle and have a bunch of points. But if you think about this particular point, I can now label this coordinate right here. And the coordinate would be based on how I got to that point. And the idea is I went over 1 half, and then I went up three halves. And that would give me this, this coordinate, one half, radical three over two. And um, before I kind of spoil it, the, the idea here is that you could put this triangle, you know, the same triangle, in a few different spots on here. You know, it's supposed to be the same triangle, except now the 60 degree angle is here. But you have the same idea, because this hypotenuse is 1. The only difference is, because it's in quadrant 2, you know, I talked about in, in a different video how the signs in quadrant 2 are slightly different. You know, we would think of this side as negative 1 half, 
but then the height would still be the same as positive radic over 2. So I can list this, this coordinate right here. It's almost the same as this one over here, except now it would be you know, negative 1 half over radical 3 over 2. So what you're going to see here, and, and it gets kind of messy, and this is what we'll talk about in class, but you can fit in some different special triangles in here. You know, another one we could fit in here, if I'm constructing this, I'll do a different color, is that you know, if I had this, this triangle right here, you know, there's my right angle, and I make this a 30 degrees, you know, that would make this a 60 degree. Well, it's going to have the same side lengths, almost saying that, same side lengths. But now this, this longer side for the blue would be this radical 3 over 2. And this, this shorter side would be 1 half because the hypotenuse is still 1. And so you'd have kind of the same points here, but now they'd be like this. So what's the power of the unit circle? You know, what's the point of this messy sketch that I'm claiming we're going to use a ton? Well, check this out. We know that sine should be opposite over hypotenuse. And we know that cosine should be adjacent over hypotenuse. You know, soca toa. And the nice thing about the unit circle is that the hypotenuse is always equal to 1. So what does that say? Well then, sine of theta will be the opposite over 1, and cosine theta would be adjacent over 1. And so if you have this, this, this diagram up here organized, it's saying that the opposite side, and I'll circle them if you can watch, the opposite side, which is represented as this, will be the sine value for this angle. Check it out. Sine of 30 degrees is opposite over hypotenuse. So sine of 30 is 1 half. But cosine of 30, whoop, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, but cosine 30 is adjacent. And then really it's over hypotenuse, but that hypotenuse is 1, so we don't have to write that. And those are what we call exact values for sine and cosine. Now if I did the same thing for 60 degrees, see if you can follow along. Sine of 60, now I'm looking at the purple triangle. Sine of 60 Again, sine of 60 is the opposite over hypotenuse. That's, that's what sine of 60 is and will always be. Cosine of 60 is adjacent over hypotenuse, but the adjacent, I'm circling it right now, look at it, the adjacent for 60 was that 1 half. these are values that are going to come up all the time. Now, if you're not sold yet, so my, my idea here generally is that as you, as you put points on the circle, the first coordinate is always going to be your cosine of that angle, and your second coordinate is going to be sine of that angle. So these, all these values that I'm underlining, guys, are cosine values. 
And you might say, well, what, what's up with the other quadrants? And I'll end with this. 60 degrees is the reference angle. It's getting sloppy. It's the reference angle for this angle. And if, if you think about that angle, it would represent 120 degrees. If I said, uh, you know, on your quiz, what's the reference angle for 120? You would bust out a 60. So this is the triangle that is the representation for 120 degrees. So why is that powerful? It means that sine of 120 now, we just extended it into quadrant two. Sine of 120 is the opposite side, which is rad three over two. But cosine of 120 is, boom, I'm highlighting it, the adjacent side. We can work our way around the circle getting values that are exact. And a lot of these values, I mean, look at these ones that we just find, rad three over two, one half, a lot of these values are going to repeat themselves. I'm gonna say a little bit more and then um, this would be good enough of an intro, but any point on the circle, including these, these nice integers, are going to give us exact values. Let's look at this point right here. Cosine of zero degrees. My claim is, is that the first number is the value. The first number is one. Cosine of zero is one. Sine of zero is... You guessed it, zero, because that's the point, one, zero. Let's look over here at this one. Cosine of 180, right? Because 180 is halfway around the circle. Cosine of 180 is, boom, negative one. Sine of 180 is, boom, you guessed it, zero. You can verify these if you want. Get out your calculator, punch in cosine of 180, it's gonna spit that out. Sine of 180, it's gonna spit that out. Sine of 120, it'll spit this out, but most calculators will spit out the decimal version of it. Anyway, I think that's a good enough start. Um, thanks for watching. If this didn't make any sense, try watching it again. Um, you know, you can get my views up, help me out. Um, but again, I appreciate it and I look forward to uh, working on this uh, unit circle with you in class.